Thank you, Lord. Father, please may there not be any kind of deviation tonight. Please carry us, oh God, the way you would have it be. There is a flow of water. There is a flow. Ha! Ah, there is a flow. There's a resounding, and it's resounding so, so well. A flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow. Lord, don't leave us without help tonight. Even as we proceed, see to it that it is your counsel that will stand. See to it, Lord, that it is how that you have preordained this meeting to be, that it will be. That your name alone might be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1. chapter 1 from verse 4. The topic I have before me tonight is yielding to the call of God. Yielding to the call of God. When they say yield, that means there is a compelling force. There is a drawing.
there is a calling there is a drawing so we are going to be looking at yielding to the the summary of God Before I go through the scripture, let me say here that the call of God is a preordained assignment is It's like a seed that has been planted in eternity. That is meant to be manifested here on earth. The calling of God is a preordained purpose of God for every man. trusting the Lord tonight because I'm trusting God to help us tonight to be able to do justice to this. What we are trusting God for tonight is that everyone will be um, will be able to locate his call and begin to fulfill it. Let me say First and foremost, here that every one of us has a call. Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 7. Please put it up. Ephesians 4, please, I'd like us to be fast. We have a lot of scripture. Say, but unto every one of us is given grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everyone has something that God has ordained or has preordained him or her uh, to fulfill here on earth. So the calling of God is like a gift that a man should not toy with by any means. The calling of God is so precious that a man should not disregard it. <laughs> you see, the calling of God is like a is like calling a man to a factory fitted mode. Let me put it this way. You see, in eternity, there is something that God did. God planted a seed inside of every man to bring to the earth here and get it manifested. Please just follow me. So if there's anything that every man must do, it is how that he or she should be able to discover what he or she has been called to do. Although there are five ministerial callings, there are persons who have been called into that. We know that. But there are also other callings that every other person has been called into. Um, First Timothy, 
Second Timothy rather. Second Timothy chapter one. Let's see it from verse nine. He said, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So this calling is, is not, it is not when you came to this earth that the calling was given. Maybe as, we, maybe as we go ahead, maybe it will begin to make sense. Let's just, let's carry it on like that. Who are saved other and colored with a holy calling. Now the Bible is saying that that calling is not because we labeled. It said that calling is according to his purpose and that purpose is what was done before the world began. So no man, no man is exempted from this. And I'd like us to know also with that the calling of God is peculiar to individual although has a measure of similarities. Please just have those pieces as we travel. So have you know that every one of us has a calling? Maybe we have not been able to do justice to this. Let me let me press on a little on this. Let me see. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter one. I think in verse. Uh, Three. Second Peter one three. He said, according to his divine power, had given us unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who had called us, who had called us unto glory and virtue. Let's proceed. So if you have this understanding of the fact that you as an individual has a calling, that calling is not limited to five-fold ministry like I said. Of course, you know we have five-fold ministry. The prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, and the pastors. These are five ministerial callings. Now, these are, these are, these are a kind of offices. But your calling might not be among these. For the fact that your calling is not part of it does not mean that you don't have a call. And know this, the calling of God is meant to give pleasure and profit to the kingdom of God. So any any calling, anything you, you, you might be doing that has no significant effect or that has no profit to the kingdom of God, you might need to review it. First Corinthians 12, I think verse 7, the Bible said, for the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. So, those giftings, those things that God had given you is given, I mean, is given to you in order to be able to bring kingdom, I mean, bring profit to the kingdom of God. So have you known that? You might be wondering how, how do I know that I have a call? I mean, 
How do I even discover my calling? Please, are we, are we clear of the fact that we all have calls? So, don't sit down somewhere and say, no, I'm, my, my life is different. I, 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 this, this, I'm exempted from this thing we are talking about. No, no, no. Every one of us is a partaker of this call. Like I said, it might be peculiar to you, but then has similarity and then the, the, the purpose of the whole thing is to be able to bring profit and pleasure to the kingdom of God. So let's go back to that Jeremiah chapter 1 earlier on. Jeremiah 1, yes, from verse 4, yeah. He said, now, we are looking at how do I discover this, this purpose we are talking about. He said, then the word, underline that statement, then the word of the Lord came unto me. Underline that statement. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 5, before I formed thee, in the belly, I knew thee. Before that came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto nations. So go back to verse 4. Now, this is Jeremiah. God was giving him the blueprint of his life. He was telling him what he has to do. And that thing did not come by assumption. <laughs> He said, the word of the Lord came unto me. So, what pertains to your calling will of necessity come by the word of the Lord. Now, coming by the word of the Lord does not necessarily mean that God will say, hey, Jeremiah. Yes, that could be a part of, be a part of it. Callings You know, I was trying to establish a foundation in the first place. I said it has to do with preordained purpose. Where, I mean, the reason why you were created, what you, what you, were, what you were formed, what the, the thing that were fire, fired into your spirit to come and be able to fulfill your own health, it was done from eternity. Okay? Or that, I think I said something like that. But now let me say this. I said it must come by the word of the Lord. That means... Is God himself that will make you know that this is what I have called you to do. Now, this calling or this discovery can either be by either by vision, by dreams, by prophetic utterance, or maybe in certain circumstances that you find yourself uh, do you know, many times, circumstances you find yourself, he speaks. Mm. Please, let me say this here. Your talent is not a pointer to your calling. You see, whatever we say here, we, we, we can prove the, the point here. Your talent is not, ne let me put it this way, it's not necessarily... Or it's not a necessary pointer to your calling or to your divine calling. There was this man called Peter. Peter had this talent of fishing. He, he was a professional fisherman. But the time came when Jesus wanted to bring him to the purpose. And Jesus, I believe God, God created a scenario that he, the Bible says he toyed all night. But God will tell me, no, this is not your purpose. You see, there are many things to say tonight. I'm just trying to see how. But God will tell me that, look, this is not, this is not your preordination. This is just your skill. So this man toiled over the night until Jesus came. 
Jesus said to him, he said, launch into the deep. That deep is not necessarily um, it wasn't that it was um, a, a literal depth of the sea. Mm -mm. Because if we're talking about the, the depth of the sea, this, Peter was a professional fisherman, so he know how to meander the ocean. He, know how, he knows how to do it well. So Jesus spoke to me, he said, launch into the deep. Maybe there's, a, there's a, a, a lot of prayer I need to go on so much to be able to say some of these things. In other words, God is saying, come out of the, the peripherals. Come out of this. God was trying to bring him to the reality of his life. It was afterwards. Jesus told him. He said, follow me and I will bring you to the purpose where which you were created for. Hi. So I was just trying to paint the point of the fact that your talent because if you don't, if you if you travel with just your talent, a time will come whereby you, I mean, if God wants to help you, He will allow you to experience frustration in that talent you think you have. If Peter had traveled with that talent of being a fisherman, he would never have become anything relevant to the kingdom of God. So I'm here to debunk that 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 ideology that you have. That this is my talent, and this, because I have this talent, there, therefore it's my it's my calling. It is not true. So, if you want to know your purpose, he said, the, the, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The vision came. The dream came. A prophetic utterance came, and then another way by which you can also ascertain your calling also is by spiritual oversight. I mean, your, 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 your spiritual oversight, your father and the Lord can, can just can look at you and say, this is who you are. <laughs> ah, my God. Another way by which you can also you can as well know your calling. Of course, that is that so 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 much. Uh, which it last I think um, on Friday also. Um, last Sunday. Using Moses as an example. See, anything God wants to do with you, many times begins from the heart. It begins. From, the Bible says. It, when Moses was 40 years old, the Bible says he came into his heart to visit his brain. I will not go there again because if you listen to that message, ah, it was, it was well dissected. So there was a compelling force that came into the heart of Moses that made him to forsake. The Bible says, the Bible says Moses was learned in the wisdom of Egypt. He was a wise man. He was mighty in words and he did. I came where another compelling force began to compel him from the spirit. The Bible says he came into his heart. And in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, where we're talking about the act of faith, you, you will realize some of the things that Moses left. He left them, there were, there were pleasures, there were many things that Moses had the, the potential of becoming in Egypt. But because of this superior compelling force that came into his heart, he forsook them all. What is now this heart I'm talking about is I'm not talking about uncircumcised heart. Yes, because uncircumcised heart is deceptive. So if you are born again and you 
your heart has been circumcised. You will be able to design the moves, be able to design the callings and the, and the shiftings of God. Please, don't mind my shout. See, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to paint something this, this evening. Jesus, help me. And then another thing, another thing also I want, to, I want you to understand. There is, please get this. There is what it's called to do. And there is where to do it. I will explain it. There is what to call to do. What Mr. A is called to do is different from what Mr. B is called to do. There is what to do, meaning the assignment. The particular tax. And then there is where to do it, meaning a place, a location to do it. For example, if God has ordained you to sing in this place, I bet you can sing, you feel you can sing very well, and you feel okay, this place is small at the moment. And then you want to go to Dunamis. We have heard many times that the grace of God flows in the direction of purpose of God. Anywhere God, see, ah, that was the that was that was what Peter was doing. He was facing the wrong place, so he could cut nothing. I reiterate this again: there is what you have been called to do. There is a place you have been called to do it. God spoke to that. He said, "Go to Abuja." He didn't say, "Go to Lagos." Go to Abuja, go and teach. That's it's, it's very see, it's very specific. Go to Abuja. That's the place. Go and teach the youth. That's it. That's the assignment. Go and teach. So even if an angel from heaven come now and say, leave this place, that you have to go and hear very well. <laughs> and one thing is that if you have been called to be in a place and then you are in another I, oh my god there are so many 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 examples to that effect so many ah. I call patando kobe natasaime nataya there is what to do. There is what you have been called to do. Specific tasks. There is a place you have been called to do. Please get this very clearly. You, you, you would have to ask God, what, do, what would you have? That's what uh, Paul said. He said, what would you have me do? Paul knew his assignment. His assignment was not called, it was not a calling to Jerusalem. When he attempted to go to Jerusalem, he was beaten. But when he came to his place, the place of his assignment, he became very effective. The grace of God flows in the direction of the purpose of God. We have had we have had such word many times, and it's true. It is important for you to hear where would you what would you have me do and where would you have me be where do you want me to be oh god what do you have me do oh god it is important to do i'm laying foundation so that we're able to come to maximize the thing that god has preordained for us any man that misses his assignment or miss the place of his assignment he will see he will um, Maybe I'm trusting God that I will get there. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Please, do we get that? There is what you have been called to do and there's a place you have been called to do it. Don't have a misplacement at all. So we have, we have talked about how to discover it. There's something I didn't see. Let me use the scripture to pen this. 
please help me open to let me um, project um, Second Timothy. I think we read one of the Second Timothy not too long ago. Um, Second Timothy, I think verse. Uh, just a moment. Yes, chapter uh, one, verse um, nine and ten. Let me go back there. I want to explain something. My heart desire this evening is that it's not just to talk. I'm trusting God that God will bring you. He will bring you to this point whereby you are not struggling with these things. He said, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And then, please go to verse 10. He said, but it's now made manifest, it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who had abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. My point is, but it's now brought to manifestation by the appearing of our Savior. Meaning that a man cannot fulfill his, his preordained purpose if he has not located Christ. Any man that is not born again cannot fulfill his divine purpose. Even if I had a way of meandering into that, that thing, it will not bring glory to Christ. He said, now, you know where we read before? In verse 9. He talks about the purpose in it. He said, but now it's made manifest. We have discovered it and because we have located Christ. Peter discovered his destiny because he located Jesus Christ. Perhaps there's anybody listening to this message who is not yet born again. You cannot fulfill destiny if you don't locate Jesus. But it's now it's made manifest. It's, it's made. How do I explain this now? The preordained destiny that you had, the calling that you had from eternity, is now made manifest now because Jesus had appeared to you. Because Jesus, you will now have Jesus in your life. Let me give you one of the prayer points. If you have not yet known what you were created for, as it is, if you have not yet known your calling, go to God and say, Lord, the Bible said that purpose that you had for me, should we go back to it again? Go to verse 9 again. Oh, time, Jesus Christ. Okay, see, he has called on with the holy calling. And he went further and said, This thing was done before the world began. So you, your prayer is that the thing that you had for me before I was created, Lord, now I am born again. Make it manifest. Show it to me. And then another thing also I want you to note is that. There is a time allocated to the manifestations of the callings. Galatians chapter 1, chapter 4. Galatians 4, 1 to 2. I like us to be very sweet. Thank you. Now I say that the hair, as long as he's a child, different not, different not nothing from a servant. Though he be the Lord of all. In verse 2. But he's under tutors and governors until the appointed until the time appointed of the father. So there is an appointed time. And before the, see, any man who feel that he cannot be under tutors, he cannot be under a spiritual father or under a spiritual oversight, is not under discipleship, is not likely to be able to come to that fulfillment. There's a time allocated for it. My prayer is that we will not be behind and we will not be ahead. Ah. <laughs> my time, I'm just watching my time because we are still in foundation. We are going to somewhere. I'd like you to also know that the, the realization of this calling we are talking about is a process. It's a continuous process. 
although you can come to the climax, but it's a process. Please note it. Okay, have one know that. There is a calling. If you refuse to yield to it, what are the dangers? Please. I, 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 I want you to follow me. Just try as much as possible to gather yourself and follow. There are dangers, there are great dangers of not yielding to the calling of God. Luke chapter 12. Luke 44, uh, 47. Luke 12, 47. Please, let's read together. Now, I'm not saying we should read aloud either, but let's, let's consider what we are doing. He said, that servant who has discovered the purpose of God for his life and preparing not himself, neither did according to his will, he said, shall be beaten with many stripes. When scripture calls something many, indeed it is many, or there are many. <laughs> One of these stripes that you will experience can be a struggle, a perpetual struggle for life. People of God, if you have, for example, you have a ministerial calling and you are working in maybe what's, what's the highest paid uh, uh, government work now? I don't know. Maybe you are working in um, FIRS or CBN, whichever one. Even if you are working in that, in that organization, the frustration that you will experience, you can't explain it. Any man who knows the will of his master and refuse to yield to it, the Bible says, shall be beaten with many stripes. So, one of the stripes with which you will be beaten with is perpetual frustration. And then another stripes you will be beaten with. There are many. He said, when scripture said there are many, it didn't specify them, but I'm just trying to point, point out some of these. Which, which, by experience, not as a person, but which we have heard, and from the scripture, we also know is that you will be brought into what, what I would call perennial lack. Something that is perennial is like a, a so, how do I explain it now? You can even be walking in, in one of those places I mentioned, but you will be borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. And then you become a mockery when you are supposed to be a person that is glory personified. You become a mock. I'm telling you the truth. When you are supposed to be a blessing to people, you become a cause. Yes. You can find from what's his name? Is it Jonah now? <laughs> find that from him. There was a calling, there was a summary, there was something that God wanted him to do. The man departed and went to another location. Instead of him becoming a blessing in that ship, he became a cause. I want you to get this thing. I, I just I, I want to believe God that you are getting this thing. Or maybe. Another thing, sir, if a man refuses to, to yield to the call of God, what happens is that you become victim of what you should be a, a master over. You become victim of demonic molestation. Ah. Oh, Jesus. 
demonic harassment, all kinds of things that you are supposed to be a master over, you become victim. It's part of the stripes. That servant, that man that God has created, which no head, he has, he has come to, he has been having that, that old. He has, prophets have even gone out for him. Many things, there are many ways by which God has revealed this thing to him, and yet he does not want to yield to it. He says, he shall be beaten with many stripes. One of the things I want, you, you can go ahead and, and, and do further study on it. Beating with men, when scripture calls something many, it is, I mean, there are many indeed. Luke 5, 4 to 5. Luke 5, from verse 4 to 5. Okay, maybe we should not read it, I think. Okay, go ahead. Verse 5, please. Sorry, let's take another one. Luke 14, 28 to 31. Luke 14, verse 28. Please, we are reading many scriptures because it's a, I just I want you to be able to get the counsel, not, oh my Jesus. All right. It said, For which of you intended to build a tower and seated not down first and counted the cost? The cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Go ahead. He said, let's have after he had laid the foundation and he's not able to, and that's the point I want to bring up. He's not able to finish it. He's not able to fulfill the thing that God had ordained for him. He said, behold. He said, all that behold him, all that behold it, all that behold the man, all that behold the woman, they will mock him. I was, I was just trying to bring out some of the dangers. There are many, there are many, there are many. I'm telling you the truth, there are many. There are many. Somebody can be a professor, sound in knowledge, in cerebral knowledge. He's sound, but he's struggling. Why? There, there was a place he missed it at the point. So don't depend on your physical. Though they are useful, one way or the other. Don't don't take it as a yastic to determine the purpose of your life. Don't. All right. So we are going to look at the challenges of the call. You see, a man that is called, we have to pass through challenges, notwithstanding. Yes. The Bible says something. He said, Ought not Christ to have suffered and enter into his glory? So it's like there's a dimension of the calling of your life. Of course, when, when, if you are fully destined, of course, I mean, fully calling, you are entering into your glory. Now, there's certain dimension of your calling you cannot enter except you pass through certain kinds of difficulties. So challenges of the call. You know, if you fulfill call, it glorifies God. And of course, anything that glorifies God, the devil will want to fight it at all means. So as a result, the call has so many confrontations. 
so many things. So we just want to point out some of the things that confront the called. One of the things that the called would have to fight with is distraction. Now, distraction can manifest in temporary lack. Yes. And that lack, that, pro, that uh, period of lack is, is a process, actually. The Bible says something. It said, I can't remember exactly, but let me just try and quote it. The Bible said, the God of all grace, after that you have suffered a while, Line that statement a while. He said, perfect, strengthen, establish, and settle you. So, there is a period of temporary lack. So, it's part of the things that you will, you would have to um, confront. And then, another part of that, I'm talking about distraction now. Thing that uh, that distraction can as well uh, bring is hatred because you are fulfilling trying to fulfill your purpose. I mean, you are you, you have discovered you know that in the life of Joseph, the Bible said his brothers hated him, he dreamt another dream. He told his brother, the Bible said they hated him the more. So, if you are experiencing hatred. Is part of the hodus, is part of the uh, the things that you would have to come, I mean, pass through as a call or as the called. And another thing also you have to pass through is mockery. Imagine you studied medicine. And then there is a purpose, another purpose that is different from that medical practitioner. Bringing you to another location and say, go and start a work. Go and start a ministerial work where you have no salary, you have nothing. The members of your family will mock you. People that know you will mock you. Is part of the challenges that the called would have to go through. It's part of the challenges. But there is one thing the scripture says, Ezra 16, in verse 15. Please let me project it. Exodus 16, verse 15. Say, whereas that has been hated and forsaken. <laughs> I don't know if I'm speaking to one person here. Could it be that we are experiencing a measure of hatred and despise? Perhaps from your friends, family members, and all that. He said, whereas that has been hated, has been forsaken and that no one, no man went to thee. The reason is because I will make you an eternal excellence. It didn't end there, and a joy of many generations. So, another thing. Another challenge also that the called uh, many times pass through is fear of uncertainty. Fear of the future and uncertainty. He's not, he's not sure of what tomorrow brings. And Lord, you are asking me to, to leave this job and then be doing this. What becomes of my life? What, 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 how do I survive? That Adeboe was, was a lecturer in, in the university and then God asked him to, to resign. And then, without a salary, and church at that time was was not that rich as it were. 
I mean, wealthy when it comes to finance. And then a, a, I think it was an associate prof leaving a teaching profession and then becoming a pastor as at that time that has nothing to be envied. So there's every tendency for a man to sit down. What becomes my tomorrow? What, how do I feed? How do I take care of these children? Fear of the future. <laughs> oh my God. Let's see Luke. Luke uh, 28. Sorry, Luke 18. That was Peter. Please, let, let me just, because of time. Peter came to a point and said, Lord, we have left Father. I mean, we have left all things and follow you. We have left everything. What he was simply asking is that, what becomes of our life? What does our future hold? What, are, what do we start to, to become in this thing that you have called us to? Peter asked that question. And Jesus responded. He said, no man. See, you know, I read the scripture earlier on. He said, no man who intends to build the toy does not sit down to count the cost. See, in prosecution of destiny must cost you something. The truth of the matter, if it does not see, anything that is not costly is not, is not, is not usually gainful. It has to cost you something, please. Jesus answered, no man, no man who has left his father and mother and wife and other things who will not receive hundredfolds of it here in this world and in eternity. <laughs> ah, my co-suprahakataya. Hmm. Abarana no subrega barana no sunamana. Please fear not. Fear not. Fear not about the people who have despised you, who have forsaken you. Though you have been hated and forsaken, so that no man wants to associate with you. He said, But I will make you an eternal excellence. There's a measure of excellency that God is processing your life into. Fear not. Ah, Akumi, there is no glory without a cost. Honor Jesus to have suffered and to enter into his glory. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. For a light affliction which we bought for a moment is working for us in far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. The measure of glory that your life will bring is what determines the measure of the pain and trials that you go through. Ah! Oh my God. 
ama sapatai hey. don't be afraid hey you see akumi take take para to zina you see many of those things are are intended to stop you so that when they when they able to stop you you become a mockery you refuse to be stopped be determined Re I mean be determined and anchor your life on the grace of God there's a measure of weight of the glory of God that your life is going to assume fear not fear not the Bible says it says God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son God is faithful always account to the fact that God is faithful the Bible says faithful is he that called thee he will do it he is faithful God cannot deny himself it's a personality of faithfulness it's dependable ha he said if I perish I perish you see if you look and see if your life is perishing now, your life will not eventually perish hmm God is faithful by whom you were called. what you go through at the moment. Indeed, the suffering of, of this present time is working for you a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Know it. Hey! Ah, mate koko bereto zi. Masiko peta kapa. Betua. Ike peke toko pa. Mate ke perosu. Saba. Mate ke pa. You see, Daddy has not been able to tell us some of his story, but I've had a story of a man of God, Pastor Paul Nature. He, he spoke about how that he was, he was. Let me paraphrase it. He was known like an object of hatred. He was, he was hated so much. See, he was so hated. No one was, no one was willing to relate to him. He was hated. He was hated. If you are told that man that, that that man was going to be processed into the dimension of life, he would never have believed. Let me say this again: the intention of those things, those lacks, and many things that you got, the intention is that you will you will come to a point and say you will give up. Don't give up. So to handle that that fear 
of uncertainty, what you need to do is that see that God is a true God. See, see that God is faithful. See that God is reliable. your insufficiency of God. The Bible says not, we are, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as of ourselves. He said for our sufficiency is of God. Your sufficiency is of God. He said, let me tell you one thing. The Bible says something. Some, I think in Romans chapter 1 the Bible was, Apostle Paul was talking about saying something. He said, by whom we have received grace and apostles. So there's a grace that is allocated to every call. Know it. God will not call you without allocating grace to the call. There is a grace allocated to every call. So don't be afraid. Don't consider the fact that, oh, I can't. That's what Moses was saying. He said, I cannot speak. God told him, who made, who has made man's mouth? Jeremiah said, I'm a child. He said, don't say you are a child. And he went further and told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, look, I have made you a brazen wall. I have made you a defense city. He said, look at what I... You see, when he, when he showed the Jeremiah, the thing that he has made him to be that he never knew, the man stood up. There is grace. Look at that, that you're calling. Sir, if God call you to Saudi Arabia, you are, you are sure it is God that is sending you there. There is a grace. By whom we have received grace and apostleship. Cut some of this. Listen to this. Don't be in haste to fulfill the call. Now, let, I think I should balance that statement. The way I should balance it should be that don't ahead of time and don't don't walk be, be behind the time that I said there's a timing allocated for everything that God has ordained for your life don't be in haste even if you are in haste let it be that you are hasty to cut up with the timings of God ah he said for you are in need of patience that after you have done the will of God you may inherit the promise. He said, be not slothful with business, but follow, be follower of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. So there's a measure of patience that you need to, you need to come into to be able to prosecute that calling that you have. Don't, don't, don't go ahead of the calling. Don't go ahead of the time that is allocated to the calling. And don't be behind. When you try to go ahead, you, you eventually miss the whole thing. I can tell you, even in this our dispensation, there are many people who have already missed their calling and destinies. They have the did it. Yes, you know it. I mean, see, hey, please don't miss your place. Don't miss your place in destiny one. Don't miss your time. Well, that timing, if you are behind, is even still better compared to when you are far ahead of the timing. 
Because when you are far ahead of the timing, there is no place, there's no way you will not make error. Error becomes inevitable if you, if you, are, if you walk ahead of the time that God has allocated. Many people today who perhaps they were calling to ministerial calling, they went far ahead of the time. They became native doctors on the pulpit. See, you see, as you take a step, it has to take every step. That's how the grace of God follows it. God told Abraham, he said, be ye follow of me. He said, follow me. A paraphrase. He said, and be thou perfect. Genesis 12, verse 1. Let me see it, if I'm correct. Genesis 12, verse 1, I think. Oh my God, time is fast, fast spent. Okay, I think it's verse, is it verse 14? Oh, where is that place? Where he told Abraham? Is it verse 17 now? <laughs> verse 17, sorry, chapter 17, from verse 1. He said, and when Abraham was 90, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You see something coming to my speech. You see Moses, Moses did a lot of worship because it was, it was, it was timely. It, it came to a place of destiny on time. So the grace of God was massive. You see, when there was a time he attempted to go ahead, he was, he was, he was displaced from Egypt. If it has come to your heart, that is what God wants you to do. Wait. Wait. Hear more. And then go to spiritual oversight and confirm it. Let the seal be placed on it. He said, And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, He said, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be the perfect. Ensure that you are on time. Don't be ahead of time. Because it's, it's tempting. Let me even tell you this. Anointing is not a signal to be ahead of time. You can be raising the dead. It's not a signal to walk ahead of time. Many I heard of a man called Jaco. He was a young minister. Let me just end it there. And he died. Is that if I'm correct? There were many of those people in those days. In the time of revival, I think I was a revival in, in, uh, in America. Many persons were, many persons came into that season because it was a season. So many, many persons were anointed. So many began to do all kinds of things. A time came where they began, they began to die. But there was this man called Ken Hagen who was, who was, who was, who was, who was, who was, <laughs> oh Jesus. He was able to understand the time the man lasted. Many though anointed died before their time. Missed it out of the way. I may be shouting, please. This is very pivotal. Daddy told me something or told us something. Let me paraphrase it. If you plant, if you plant a mango tree and it, and it, it didn't produce, do you need to force it? If the mango you plug on ripe and go and force it to ripe. It will not be sweet. Have you noticed it? But it is organic. The mango, it, as the time proceeds, you will realize that the mango begins to get ripe. That's how destiny is. Don't force it too much. If you force it, who do you want to glorify? You want to glorify yourself. It's not good. So why are you forcing it? But I'm not saying you shouldn't press into the timing of God. Don't press too much ahead. Many have done that. Today, the Bible said they became the enemies of the cross. Belly has become their God. Scripture says so. So, 
what you need to do, please settle your heart. Let it be a settled thing. See, Peter told Jesus, he said, to whom shall we go? That's how, me. By the mercy of God, I'm trusting God for grace. To whom will I go? To, to whom? See, submit yourself to the dealings of God. It is in that dealings, God will be able to remove excesses. I mean, the things that has ability to draw you to the world. For example, if you like eating chicken and eating all kinds of um, uh, sawama, all manner of things and you are so obsessed with it, submit yourself to the dealings of God. And as you are going through that, if many times God will allow you to face lack in order to be able to, to deal with that, 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 that appetite that is dragging you away from God. As you begin to work with God, what happens is that God will begin to kill this appetite of the law for cars. Of the law for what are these, these things now? You know them. God will begin to deal with them. And then those senses, do you know, Eva, I think I'm sorry, I said something. He said, He said, as you work with God, your will become, we keep getting narrower. You can come to God so fast. I'm not talking about physical fastness, I mean, your ways are focused. You talk anyhow, you eat, you go anywhere. But as you begin to walk with God, God will begin to, the Bible says, for the love of Christ let us. God will begin to constrain you. Begin to, begin to narrow your path. Narrow your path. Narrow your path until all your gaze. Until my holy gaze is in spirit keep brooding over me. So until the gaze, on your gaze entirely is focused on God. It is the dealings of God that brings a man to that point. So settle it in your heart. And then quickly, in the next five minutes or so, I want to talk about the, the benefit. There are many benefits, however. You see, one of the benefits is that a crown of glory will be placed on you. You'll be brought into a mesh, into this, this authority. Ah. Men that have entered status in the spirit, it was a process. <laughs> hey, Jesus is Lord. Time will fail me to give one or two examples now. Please permit me to say, Mommy, please, permit me, man. You see, I've heard Bishop Wade go say, let me paraphrase it. You see, that man, that man has, I don't know how many aircraft he has now. Okay, thank you, man. I don't know how many aircraft he has, but this man, God, he said, God had given him instruction not to travel out of the country, I don't know how long. He has the money to go to any part of the world. He wants to go to. He has the flight to move. Everything to, 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 to I mean, go on that adventure. They are available. But God has tamed him. Be tameable. It was the dealing that brought that man to that place. But if it's, if it's some people of this our generation, the, the, the money is there. And then the aircraft is there. Is there and then the visas are available. Move from one country to another, from one place to another. You are just you see when you yield to the call, the calling like I atomize, they are usually not easy. But settle your heart to fulfill it. Settle your heart to yield. If you have no example, if you think you have no example, we have a very major example. Please, I, I don't say, hey, Jesus. That is not here now. At least you can ask, mommy. Ask how they were able to stay in this calling. Settle it in your heart. When you settle it in your heart, the grace of God will be available for it. So, when you yield to the calling, you become a solution to the, to the questions of, I mean, answer to the questions of people and then solution to the, the bodies and pains and problems of people. You become a solution. You know, when we're talking about distraction, you, you know Elisha. Elisha was following Elijah and then the sons of prophets. People in the church, they were mocking him. Don't you know your servants shall be taken away from you? People in the church, sons of prophets. And then, he said, keep quiet. He said, one of the things you need to do, shut, out, shut them out. Even if they're in your church, shut them out. 
when God is taking you through a process and people tend to mock, shut them out. The man shut them out. And then he was able to receive that mantle when he came. The Bible said they, they view from afar, say, ah, the spirit of Elijah. Elijah does rest upon Elijah. Elijah. And they bow to him. And they called him and said, the, the, the son of this man is, is, is beautiful. The water is, is bad. So the man became a solution. Let no man deny you of that thing that God is processing you to. So you can find in 2 Kings, I think 2, 15 to, um, you can just read all the way from, from like 3 down to 22. There's a story of Elisha, Elisha you, know, you know that. Ultimately, let me say this. Hmm. I don't know if I should say this now. If you refuse to fulfill your calling, you are not likely to make the kingdom of God. And if you, if you make it, I don't know how to explain this. Many times it's not even possible because if you are not in alignment, you, you are in disalignment, grace will not be there to function. I was in a place. There's a place that got the job. Mommy and daddy is that way and some places. And then, Anytime I go to that place, I say, no, this is not my place. Not in, in Abuja here. It's not my place. And I, one of the things I said is, if you remain in that place, even the grace to live a righteous life, you will lose it. If you are not in the place that God has ordained for you to be, grace to, to, to stay and not compromise, you will lose it. So if you are not in your purpose, grace will not be available to live a righteous life. And if you don't live a righteous life, you cannot make the kingdom of God. You see it? So when you fulfill that call, I, I love what I was supposed to say. Let me, let's see. Um, God, I'll just round off in a few minutes, please. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, verse uh, 7. Please, let me project that quickly. Second Timothy 4. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give, unto, give me at that day. And not me only, but unto all them that also love is appearing. So there was a crown of righteousness that was, that was awaiting him. When he, when, he, when, he, when he's coming to heaven, angels will be clapping. There will be, there will be, there will be a clapping ovation. That will, if, oh my God. And then in this earth too, you know Jesus told the, told the, the, the disciples, he said, no man who has left father, mother, and the rest who followed me who will, not, who will not have a hundredfold of this thing in this world? I mean, I mean the world to come. Another thing also, you are so liable, I mean, you are so uh, going to profit from it, is that your greatness, the greatness that God has ordained for you will become manifest. Money is not what necessarily makes you great. I, I, I go around town sometimes. I meet boys that are men, young men, many of those people that I believe many of them they are in millions, perhaps in billions. It's not what makes them great. The Bible says Jordan became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. We are going to pray. Please rise on your feet. There's a scripture I want us to pray with. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Um, First Corinthians chapter two, uh, fifteen. First Corinthians fifteen, verse ten is a popular scripture we know. Verse ten. He said, "But by the grace of God, I am what I am." In other words, 
I could come to a state where I came to because there was a measure of grace that was available to me. That's the place I want us to take. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Can we ask God for the grace to become, to come to the center of our callings? Please, if you have had anything, ask God for that grace. Say, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Time will not permit us to, to press more on that prayer. But just in a few minutes, can you press on that prayer?